light uh, simulation and we're trying to answer a few questions using this. Um, first off asks how do you change between ray and wave representation of light. So right now if I press the button to turn the light on the simulator shows me rays of light which again are just lines that represent a path that uh, light travels or if you happen to use a laser beam for experiments it's a pretty good representation of what happens with the laser beam. You can also though here show a wave representation and so you can see some small wave fronts that are moving in here obviously much slower than the actual speed of light but to help us uh, visualize what's going on. So the second question asks what happens when light hits the boundary between air and water? So this up here at the top is set to be air right now and it is down hitting the boundary with uh, the water and part of it's being reflected and sent back up here and part of it is being transmitted through the water layer down here and so you notice a few things. First of all the light that gets reflected uh, seems to have those wave fronts spaced out about the same amount as they were here but the wave fronts in the water are actually uh, closer together to show uh, a representation that the light actually slows down a bit when it goes into uh, the water. It also asks us to, to observe the angles and so you can do that either just by visualizing but there is a little protractor tool here so if I go ahead and measure the angle that the light is coming in at, maybe I'll go back to a ray representation it appears to be uh, coming in at about a 45 degree angle relative to the surface of the water or a 45 degree angle relative to this vertical line which is how it's typically measured in physics. Uh, and on the other side the reflected angle is about a 45 degree angle there as well and about a 45 degree angle with the dashed line. So the angle it's getting reflected at is the same as the angle that it's coming into the surface at. But the angle that it's going uh, in the water is different. Light actually gets bent uh, in, when it travels into the water and in this simulation it's showing that that angle relative to this perpendicular line which we often in physics call the normal line uh, is in fact smaller and if I change uh, the angle here of the light this relationship stays the same where I always get this reflected piece of the light to uh, reflect at the same angle but there's a different angle in the water where the light is bent. Uh, I can also on here measure uh, the intensity and I'm going to go back to the wave representation here because it's a little bit thicker but I have a little intensity meter so you'll notice if I measure here uh, it's a hundred percent intensity and in this simulation the meter cuts off the light to measure it so it just stops it wherever you uh, go to measure. That's a hundred percent of lights coming here but then if I go and let it reflect off of here, most of the light is making its way into the water here, 94% uh, ish. Uh, and that would mean that about six, well, five and a half percent is being reflected above. But it turns out uh, that that, that relationship changes a little bit and it depends on the angle. So if I change to go to a much steeper angle in here, uh, now almost 98% of the light is being transmitted into the water layer and only a couple percent is making it back in the reflected. Whereas if I get a much shallower angle to the surface of the water here, um, I'm going to notice that again, got 100% over here, but now only about half is being reflected off of the surface of the water uh, and half of that is being transmitted down into the water layer. It also asks us what happens if we change the medium. So I'm going to go back to my light here. What happens if I make the top water and the bottom air? Uh, and in fact, you see that, you know, I still get some of the light that's reflected off of that surface. Some is transmitted, but now when it goes out into the air, it makes a bigger angle with respect to that dashed line in the middle uh, because air is a less optically dense material than is water and so it bends away from that normal line uh, and then again in the simulator it's showing me one wavelength of light in the water the reflected wavelength is the same distance but here in the air the wavelength spreads out uh, as the light actually speeds up once it starts traveling in the air.
And again, I can see that you get 100% intensity here, uh, but only some fraction of that is being reflected back into the air, about 10%, uh, and much of it is being, or rather reflected back in the water layer, much of it is being sent on uh, into the air layer. And clearly, if you play around with the simulator, there's a lot of other things you can change about the materials and the relationship there. But for the second part, we want to look at the prism setup here. And so I've got uh, a whole menu full of prisms to select the triangular prism. That's how we do it. This turns the angle of the prism. Uh, and I can turn the light on, and then I can change the angle of the light and change the position of the light as well. So let's see what happens when we send light through. Uh, we get light coming in here, but it hits a boundary between air and glass, so it gets bent. And then it comes through and hits a boundary between glass and air again, uh, and it is bent a second time. And so the net effect is to bend the light overall in the downward direction. If I were to flip the prism over, uh, I guess I only need to do that. Let's maybe move it. Notice that the net effect is to bend the light upward, and we use this a little bit when thinking about the construction of lenses uh, in a few days when we talk about that. So through a triangular shaped prism, the prism actually bends the light twice, uh, but the net effect is an overall redirection of that light beam. Uh, does the amount of bending depend on the wavelength of light? Well, um, it might, I guess, help us to put a protractor in here somewhere. So I'm just going to put it there so we have some reference for that visual. Right now we're sending red light through. And you'll notice that as we move down the spectrum into uh, yellow light and then green light and then blue light on towards violet, it is in fact changing uh, and the angle that it gets bent at depends on the color or the frequency or the wavelength, however you want to characterize, characterize that, of the light. And so if you send white light through here, and this simulator doesn't actually have the white light capability, um, the red gets bent by a certain amount, but the violet gets bent by more. And so you get a classic, uh, image of the rainbow being spread out by the prism. Uh, there are other things that you can experiment if you want to do so. There's other shapes of prisms. Um, but the last question here said, what does showing the reflections simulate? So just for fun, let's put in a different shape prism. Here is a uh, transparent cube and light is traveling through here and, and the majority of the light will take this path. But if we check the little reflections tab, it actually gives us a more realistic picture of what happens. When light again hits a boundary between air and glass, much of that light gets transmitted, but some of it gets reflected back at this surface. And then when I go to my second surface, uh, much of it passes back through into the air, but a little bit of it is reflected. And the portion that's reflected inside the cube actually reflects again several times off the different faces here. And this phenomena, if none of the light makes it out right at this boundary, is something known as total internal reflection. And we'll revisit that point uh, in a couple of lectures. Uh, here again, it's coming, bouncing. Some of it's reflected. Some of it's going out at this point. And it looks like most of it is making its way out here. And the amount that would be reflected is uh, too small of an intensity to be shown in the simulator. So that's it, and obviously uh, you can log in and play around with much more in this simulator, but the main ideas we wanted to see here was that light bends when it travels through uh, something like a prism, and it actually bends depending on the color of the light, a different angle, which can spread white light out into the colors of the rainbow.